This section looks at coastlines and how physical processes can affect people. Our next case study looks at the Holderness Coast near Humberside and how coastal erosion is affecting the people who live there. As you watch the next clip, look out for information that will help you answer the following. Explain what is being done to deal with the problems of coastal erosion. And explain why attempts to reduce coastal erosion in one location can cause problems further along the coast. The 50 kilometres of coastline to the north of the Humber Estuary, called the Holderness Coast, suffers one of the highest rates of erosion in the world. On average, between one and two metres of this coast will be washed into the sea every year. Well, that spectacular rate of erosion is an extreme example. And fortunately, it's not like that right round the whole coast of Britain. But it's a reminder that the coastline, which looks so fixed and stable on maps, is in reality quite fragile and constantly changing in shape. The shoreline of the British Isles is one of the world's great natural battlegrounds. But even in really high seas, hard rocks like these will erode only very slowly. Other rocks, less tough, will erode faster. In some places, changes can happen almost overnight. And it's waves like this, whipped up by strong winds, that can do most damage. Now, if you've ever walked along the beach, and watch the waves breaking on the shore, you've probably noticed that some waves are bigger than others. Now, it's not true, incidentally, that the seventh wave is always the biggest, but it certainly is true that big waves carry more energy than small waves. And the bigger the wave, the greater the energy. The sea isn't always this rough. This is a more usual sight. The waves are smaller, and they're not reaching the base of the cliff. When the waves do get up to the base of the cliff, this is the kind of erosion that happens. On a high sea, the waves can force water and air right into these cracks and literally blast them apart. Now, I don't think it's going to be too long before this pillar here is worn away. And when it is, everything above is going to come crashing down. This rock fall may protect the cliff for a little while, but in time, the sea will break it up and carry it away. There's enough energy in waves like this to carry off hundreds of tons of material on every tide. But the coast is not totally defenseless. One of the best things to absorb the energy of the waves is a nice, wide, sandy beach. Now, if you look closely at a wave when it breaks, you'll see that it washes sand up the beach, and when it retreats, it washes it down again. And most of the energy in the waves is used up just moving sand around. If the waves hit the beach square on, then the sand is just moved up and down the beach. But if the waves hit the beach at an angle, like they are here, then they wash the sand up the beach in this direction and down again over there. And that's what we call longshore drift. In other words, the sand and gravel around our coastline is constantly shifting, like a moving carpet. Not all of our coastline is natural. About a quarter of our coast is now protected by sea walls, many of them built after the 1953 storm that did so much damage to towns on the east coast. But perhaps an even better way to defend the coastline are these, wooden groins. They look like walls built out to sea and are designed to stop sand drifting along the shoreline. By trapping the sand, you retain a nice wide sandy beach which protect your particular stretch of coastline. Very effective they are too. But they can cause problems. Any wall built out to sea can interfere with the natural movement of sand along the coast, the longshore drift. This harbour mouth was built in the 19th century and it's caused immense problems to the town of West Bay in Dorset. It's trapped the sand on one side of it 
with the result that the sand on the far side has moved on down the coast. But none can come along to replace it. These houses now have to be protected by hard sea walls, where before, none were needed. The lesson from West Bay is that interfering with the coastline in one place can really cause problems for places further along. But even if we've learned that lesson well, putting it into practice can still be difficult. This is the village of Mappleton, on the Holderness coast where this program began. So much land is being lost from this stretch of the coastline that barriers like this have to be moved two or three times a year. Clifftop Farm will soon be just another memory to its last inhabitants. When it was built, it was several kilometers inland. Within living memory, it's lost this much land to the sea. The problem here is that the cliffs are made of a very soft rock called till. And it's really just clay with a few stones in it. But there's another problem here. At high tide, there's really very little in the way of a beach to protect the cliffs against attack by the waves. If nature had been allowed to take its course, parts of Mappleton, just like this old house, would now be under demolition. The village would be preparing to join the role of the 29 lost villages that have been swept into the sea since Roman times, from Wilsthorpe in the north to the strangely named Raven Sir Odd in the south. 200 years ago, the village was four kilometers from the sea. Six of Mappleton's houses have already gone in the last 15 years. My house was well over a quarter of a mile away from the sea. Who can remember a field being up there? And there was the parade ground that, when it was the army camp. And there was the gardens. They've all gone now. But Mappleton has had a last-minute reprieve. And this is the reason. The main road from Hornsey to Withensey runs through the village. The local council worked out that building sea defences would be far cheaper than the cost of moving the road back. If a wall could be built out to sea, it would encourage the sand to build up in front of the village, and that would absorb the energy of the waves and protect the soft cliffs from erosion. So the local council decided to build these sea defences to trap the sand. Now, some people argued that building these sea defences might cause problems further down the coast, and it looks as if they might well be proved right. On this side, we've got a nice, wide, sandy beach, and that's protecting the cliff. But on this side, it's a very different story. We've got a very narrow beach, and the waves are coming right up to the cliff and eroding them away. The farmers just south of Mappleton have been the first to complain. A crop of winter wheat, planted in the autumn, has disappeared into the sea by the following spring. Sue Earle's family moved to Great Cowden Farm in 1957. At that time there was a whole field between them and the sea, enough, they thought, to last their lifetime with a little to spare. Thirty-five years later, and the sea is at their door. Sue has seen the erosion of her land increase dramatically, and she's convinced that the new defences at Mappleton are to blame. We would have approximately 50 metres, a good big field out there where we grew crops. But now, at that rate of erosion would be approximately a metre a year at that time. But since Mappleton was, had been built in 91, we've lost 20 metres in many places. 20 metres? So you lost that much in a year? In one year, yes. Which is an alarming rate. So if we continue at this rate, Many, many of our buildings will have gone in the next two years. Well, as soon as we saw the, the big cracks appearing, we started taking measurements. But then if you looked at the beach, there was no sand. And sand is your basic protection. The sand gathered up at Mappleton due to the defence there. So our sand depleted. So the, bit, the sea was hitting the bottom of the cliff every day. And the erosion increased. And was it only in storms or just every day? Every day. Even the neap tide would get it right to the top. It would hit the cliff every day. It was just hammering it, so the bottom it would just cave out and the, we'd get a crack and it would just drop. 